Hello and welcome back to another episode of Tash Teaches. I am, of course, Tash, and in today's video I'd like to look a little further into some of the concepts we explored in my recent video, My Favourite Feature in Bitwig 5, which is, of course, the project level modulation. In the previous video I'd shown how you could create knobs that change multiple things and therefore smoothly glide in between states. Uh, I wanted to show you how you may then take this step uh, take this technique a step further and to create full-on arrangements out of it. And I don't just mean arrangement in the sense of the way that you would lay out MIDI clips and creating a sort of blocky masterpiece. I mean printing stems in real time. Now, why would you want to do such a thing? Well, for me at least, there are two main reasons. Number one is that I find it is infinitely easier to finish a song when I'm committing to audio. When I have audio stems, there is very little I can really do compared to if I'm working with lots of MIDI. Therefore, having less things to be able to do means often I do less and often finish things more. The second reason is, and I've mentioned this in a number of videos before, that I think that audio is honest, whereas MIDI can be a little deceiving and dishonest with how you see what you're hearing. Of course, a MIDI clip of a kick drum shows you nothing other than where the note will be. You don't really know where the cutoff is, you don't really know how long the note is. But when you look at audio, it's a lot easier to see a smaller kick indicates a quieter kick. Uh, a less long kick indicates a shorter kick, and uh, so on. When you're playing with cutoff, filk, uh, cutoff frequencies on synthesizers and delays and reverbs, you see that the audio gets thicker and denser as you increase the opening. And with MIDI, again, it just looks the same, regardless of wherever the knob is. So without further ado, let's jump right in and I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about. I've gone ahead and created eight, in fact, ten knobs here. And each of these groups, you can see that we've got a kick, hats, bass and synths group. Each of these groups has two knobs. Uh, looking at the kick, for example, if I bring both of these down, we have a very tiny kick. The top knob is the decay, the bottom knob is a filter. If we look at the hi-hats, the top knob is a sort of brightness and volume, and the bottom one is decay. Looking at the bass, we actually have two bass channels. So this first one is just a volume and slight filtering of this kind of wompy synth. And then this other one, I'm actually going to change the order of these because that's the order that it's mapped down here. This just increases and decreases the decay and cutoff of this ba 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 bass. And then under the synthesizers, we've got, uh, we've got one knob that sort of increases everything. We've got another knob that increases this drone below it. Then I've also gone ahead and created two extra knobs, and these extra knobs are sort of effect knobs. So if I put everything in, let's open everything up a little bit, this first knob takes us to a sort of breakdown, so it's going to remove the drums. It's also opening the synths more than they would like this. And then I've got another knob below that increases the delay And this just really allows me to fuck around and create some rather magical environments. So, what I want to show you today is how we can take the ability to play these knobs manually with our hands and to print audio. I've created a group where in which I have five audio channels. There's nothing on these channels, I just created a bunch of empty audio channels and I selected the input to be coming from one, the output of this kick, Hats is going to come from the output of this group. Bass is going to come from the output of the bass group. Music from the synths group. And finally, effects comes from a little uh, bus I've created here that combine both of the sends and send it to one channel. Now you can see that if I press play, we have the audio coming through on every single one of these channels. I can actually mute this group because we're still hearing it from here. We don't necessarily need to hear that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring all my knobs back down to zero and I'm just going to record. I've got this first intro bit here. This, this bit's I think quite cool because it, it stays on one vibe. We don't end up changing with the bass notes. And I'm just going to show you what happens when you record the audio out while playing it. I've got, I've got these channels record enabled and that means that if I now press stop and record 
I'm now able to, in real time, decide on what my arrangement should be. So I can also bring the volumes of these things out. So obviously there I brought the kick out, brought it back in slightly harder. Now I've got the bass in. And you can see in real time that this is printing as if it were stems in a song, as if you're remixing a song for someone. Now I'm gonna go into this second bit. a subtle breakdown. And I can now actually start to bring out the original bass and bring in the new one. And look at that, you can really see the benefits of creating in the moment like this. channels with actually seeing in here the real-time manipulation of what we're doing there. I'm going to start to really bring these drums out and then I'm actually going to stop all of these clips and you'll see that this is just going to slowly steadily end. Now, of course, all I have to do is I'm gonna take the groups that I had and I'm gonna put that in, let's just call this song files. And I'm just gonna hide that for now because all I want to do is look at my arrangement. So I look at that and I now see that I could probably put in some insert cue markers. This is our first drop. This is obviously our output, uh, sorry, our out outro. And that doesn't mean that I have to just leave it exactly as is, because what I could do is I could say, take this little piece here, and I could maybe use that as a sort of build up for this intro section here. Let's see what that sounds like. 
And this isn't, oh, this isn't what would be happening here. So being able to take these little sections and just know full well that um, I can really start to get quite creative with what I'm doing. And you can think as well, if you had more hi-hats, more different drum layers, more synthesizers, and you've mapped it all out, this is such a great way of very quickly being able to say, okay, well, this is my song. I can now remove this there because clearly I don't need that. I often like to get rid of bits when there isn't anything happening. In this case, there isn't that much of it. Yeah. That about does it for today's video. It was a nice and quick one, but I hope this technique is useful and I hope it allows you to finish a hell of a lot of songs and just get straight into the situation of having stems. I often find that if I have worked on a song for months on end and I've got 150 different channels, the difference between songs that I end up finishing and the ones that I don't is I usually end up printing those myriad of stems down into a slightly more manageable, say, five or six. Sometimes I maybe go to ten if I really do want to keep, say, keys separate from flutes, separate from arpeggiators, separate from pads. But in general, I find that slimming your project down, and in particular, getting it into audio, is just such an invaluable technique in moving forward. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and smash that notifications button to keep up to date with my future videos too. In the meantime, happy Tuesday and happy creating.